Hey guys, Chaps here, and today's video is a follow-up to Monday's video. There I talked about some of the hurdles of Gears getting into the Battle Royale space, and why I think it's unlikely. Today, I'm taking a slightly different approach. Today I'm going to be discussing my views on what could make for a successful Gears BR. In the previous video, the main point I tried to drive home was this. Gears can't simply make a Battle Royale game and expect people to flock to it. In order for it to be successful, they really need to do something that makes it a unique experience, that not only drives people to it, but encourages people to stay. As I've alluded to previously, just keeping the traditional Gears playstyle doesn't seem like the right move. My mind then shifted over to, okay, maybe we change up the gameplay, but it still needs something special. No matter how long I kept thinking about it, the monsters and creatures always kept coming to my mind. The ability to play as Locust and Swarm Monsters is something really unique to Gears. My first thought was, okay, maybe they could just keep it as classic Gears gameplay, but then upon death, you're able to spawn back in the map as a monster. Like, it would be pretty cool to run around as a wretch or a ticker and try and blow up some other humans on the map. I just got cool vibes from the thought of it, like, as the match draws closer to the end, the remaining humans are not only trying to stay in bounds, but also surviving the monsters. It gives a uniqueness to the endgame, but also provides a fun opportunity for those who have died in order to keep them engaged for longer. Initially, I assumed it would function like beast mode. You start out as low tiers and maybe you could work your way up. If you're dead for a really long time, maybe you can get some pretty high up monsters by the end. But another thought I had was more about the team-based side of things. Instead of working your way up, your remaining teammate's performance would earn you points that you could then spend on monsters. From here, this is where things really started to come together for me. There's one big change I made, and it really struck a chord with me. Like, I've been skeptical of a Gears Battle Royale, and I'm still sort of hesitant. But the mode that I discuss in the remainder of this video is something that may actually have a fighting chance. And obviously I'm biased here, but hear me out and let me know what you think of this. I think it's pretty awesome. Okay, so the thought that made things click for me was... Why wait for people to die in order to become a monster? That's a fun aspect of the game. Some people might want to die intentionally just in order to use the creatures. What if you could actually spawn as the creatures? Like, what if you had Swarm, Locust, DBs, and Humans all as playable characters in the match? So here we go. Here's the mode. The basics of Battle Royale are you drop into the map, and you want to be the last one standing as the ring slowly restricts portions of the map. Starting with dropping in, I think a cool concept would actually be a two-sided drop-in. And I don't mean two things coming in different directions across the map. I mean, an above ground and a below ground drop. If it's an outdoor map, the humans and the DBs could drop from a condor and land in DB drop pods. The swarm and the locust could actually start underground and maybe tunnel up, maybe even launching, I don't know, somehow from a rift worm. Falling from the sky would just be like normal. You can see everyone else jump and see where they're heading, but you wouldn't be able to see where the monsters are underground, and sort of the opposite for that monster side. They'd be able to see where everyone else is tunneling, but they can't see the above ground people until they emerge. As a side note, it would kind of be cool to see that concept on an underground map. Like, the Locusts and the Swarm would be the same, they still just tunnel up. But the humans and DBs could launch in grind lifts from a derrick or something. So that covers the basics of dropping in. But the other main aspect of what makes a battle royale is how the ring closes around you. Gears has quite a few ways that could work with this already in the lore. Having a Hammer of Dawn come down in areas would be interesting. Or even something like Emulsion from the Gears 2 map Flood. Typically in a battle royale, you don't instantly die if you're out of the ring though, so perhaps a better approach would be to have the flock or the krill to close in. I think any of those four things would bring a cool aesthetic to the game. Alrighty, now that we have those basics out of the way, let's hop into the main discussion, the actual gameplay. Before talking about the characters and how things would be balanced, I just wanted to take a second to hit on mechanics. As I said many times, Gears can't just rely on keeping with traditional Gears mechanics. And while I still believe that's true, I feel it might actually be okay to stick with for this. Reason being? Well, now you have other classes, and more specifically, the monsters. It allows people to stick with traditional gameplay if they want, but it also allows others to play in a different style. For balance, I'm sure there's a lot of questions that would arise. Isn't it going to be hard to balance the game when there's so many different classes and abilities and playstyles? Yeah, it certainly will be, but probably not as hard as one may think. Being it's a simple human versus monster mode, it's not like the teams need to be balanced. It's battle royale. It's either free-for-all or it's small squads. Sure, each player will have certain advantages, but they'll also have disadvantages. In addition, there's nothing saying the coalition wouldn't be able to dial in certain aspects once certain metas evolve. So yeah, it'll be almost impossible to perfectly balance right out of the gate. But due to the nature of gameplay and battle royales and the ability to tune things over time, I really do feel that it could be dialed in pretty quickly. Now, let's actually talk about these classes. How do I see these things working out? 
Well, I have it split into the above ground side, being the DBs and the humans, and the underground side, being the swarm and the locust. If you're in a squad, you either pick the above ground or the underground side, and then you form your squad based on whatever combinations of characters you want. So yeah, your squad could be DBs and humans, your squad could be just humans, you could have swarm and locust, just locust, whatever you want, as long as you don't mix above ground and below ground. And to be clear here, I'm not proposing an above ground versus underground battle, it's still either free for all or squad versus squad. I'm just saying that you can't mix and match between the sides. In order to go into more detail about the classes, let me start with the humans. They're what most people think of, so I'll walk through that one first. The Coalition's version of Horde, or even Judgment's Overrun, seem like a decent starting place. I feel that it should be class-based. If monsters and everything are unique, then I feel humans need to be as well. So to keep it simple, imagine four classes, like a marksman with an ultimate that has a judgment style spotting beacon, a medic class that has a jackpot ability that I basically see jack popping out to heal people and maybe repairing DBs or something, a bruiser class specializing in close quarters battles, an assault class specializing in grenades and rifles. Mm, not really sure what those last two classes would have as an ultimate, but I like the idea of one having an ammo resupply thing, similar to judgment I guess, and the other one having something offensive. These characters would drop in with just their pistols and their abilities. Granting kills would earn them some sort of ability. We could call it scrap, or energy, or use the skulls from arcade, or whatever. As with any battle royale around the map, you'll find various drops. Some of these may be weapons or ammo boxes, some could be armor, some could simply be additional currency. The currency, either earned by scavenging or via kills, could then be spent on upgrades. You can purchase perks or you can purchase weapons, which would depend on which class you're playing as. It's pretty simple, and it would make for a pretty basic battle royale game. But let's now talk about some of the non-human classes. Sticking with what I refer to as the above ground side, we have the DBs. Trackers, DR1s, and Shepherds are the basics of what I picture. DR1s would be slower and tankier. For an ultimate, maybe they could pull out a try shot for 10 seconds or something. The Shepherd would most likely be like a standard human, but with more health. The ultimate could be a repair sequence in which he repairs everything around him. So why this repair sequence? Well, I picture the DBs as not having health regen capabilities of their human teammates. A DB may be a bit stronger, but they don't heal as often. But wait, Cheps, are you just going to ignore the fact that you just mentioned trackers? Nope. Trackers and tickers were actually a couple of the enemies that I put some thought into. They seem super fun to play as, but how could something like that work in a single life mode? Well, in my mind, the answer comes down to the ultimate ability. Keep the dash and exploding capabilities, but for an ultimate, place a respawn beacon. If the tracker, or ticker I guess, is at full health, they can place a respawn beacon that will last for 10 seconds. If they die within those 10 seconds, they'll respawn at the beacon. This allows them to keep their suicidal nature, but forcing them to activate it at full health and having it only last 10 seconds, they can still be caught off guard. Oh, and with the recharge time for the ultimate, it's not like they can be invulnerable all the time and just keep running around and respawning. Not to mention that if someone sees the beacon, they'll be an easy spawn kill when they come back. It may be tricky to get right, but these are some classes that would be a blast to play as, and this could potentially make it work. Okay, so now what about the other types of squads that you could make? What about the Swarm and Locust squads? And honestly, what about the monsters in general? Many of them don't use weapons, so what do map pickups do for them? Well, I'm going to start with the Swarm Drone. I picture him as the human equivalent, but on the underground side. He can regen health as normal and basically plays like a human. With the other monsters, I think most of them would either not regen naturally or maybe just regen really slowly, but mainly rely on a Cantus to heal them. They'd still have all the perks and ultimates, and most could even gain some armor if found on the map. But what about weapons? We have both pickup weapons and we have the equivalent of arcade weapon purchases. For the monsters who can't wield normal weapons, if they come across a weapon on the map, they don't want to just leave it there for the enemy, right? Some creatures could opt to consume the weapon for lack of better words, or just eat it like we've seen tickers do this before. Or maybe they could dismantle the weapon. Either way, upon consuming or dismantling the weapon, the player will earn some scrap, skulls, energy, or whatever the currency is. Oh, and I guess for the sake of fairness, if they die or they drop the weapon, it'll just spawn as normal but with half the ammo. This takes care of the weapons on the map, but what about purchases? Rather than upgrading your weapons, I feel it'd be cool to progress your character in some way. A melee boomer class may start as a butcher, then gain the ability to purchase an upgrade to become a defensive mauler, one with that spinning shield ability, or maybe upgrade to an offensive mauler, the one with the explosive flail. Rather than switching weapons, the players could basically switch between variants within their class, once they've purchased that variant, of course. In the same trend, tickers could become armored tickers. I don't know why someone would not be a wild ticker, but maybe a wild ticker. 
Cantus could become Armored Cantus. A Scion could switch between a Mulcher Scion, Boomshot Scion, and Dropshot Scion. And same thing with Boomers, I guess. I haven't really thought of Corpse or Serapedes, Pouncers, and Wretches, and what they could do, but I'm sure there's some cool ideas out there. But yeah, I mean, that's basically my idea. It's a large battle royale where you have Swarm, DBs, Locust, and Humans all fighting. Balance may be difficult at first, but it will be much easier due to the fact that it's not side versus side. Anyone can be anyone, and it's basically a free-for-all. So my question's for you. One, I guess it's just, would you play that? Two is, what issues do you see with it? And three would be, just back to the original question at hand, what would you like to see from a Gears Battle Royale game? And with that, I guess we'll wrap things up here. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Thanks everyone for watching, and I will catch you next time.